Now that we've had our first taste of 3D, let's take a look at what makes SketchUp work so well. It is important to understand the fundamentals of SketchUp to eventually master this program. In this chapter, we will explore the main drawing tools available in SketchUp. First, let's go to our System Preferences dialog box under Window Preferences. If you're on a Mac, this is going to be under SketchUp Preferences. Go to your Template tab at the left-hand side, and let's scroll all the way down to the bottom and choose the second one from the bottom, Beginning Training Template, Inches. Highlight this, and if you're on a PC, click on OK, and if you're on a Mac, you can just close that window. Next, in order to see that template, we need to start a new document under File, New. And we don't need to save any of these changes necessarily. Now that we have our new drawing open, let's go to our Rectangle tool, and let's draw a rectangle. And while we're in this new template and for this upcoming exercise, let's really focus on not orbiting or doing any of the 3D navigation that we've done in the previous exercise. We just want to focus on some of the 2D basics of SketchUp and understanding these drawing tools, and we will very quickly move back into 3D. So to start off, let's use the Rectangle tool, and let's click once on the origin, move our cursor towards the top right corner, and also take note that the Rectangle tool will snap to a perfect square, as well as the golden section. So we're just going to move our cursor towards the top right corner of the screen to suggest a direction, let go of the mouse, and type 5 apostrophe comma 5 apostrophe enter. So now we have a perfect 5 foot by 5 foot square. Next, using the line tool, let's take a look at how we can draw on axis in SketchUp. So it's very important that anything that is intended to be parallel, perpendicular, at a right angle, we need to draw on axis perfect every time. Uh, we can be very sketchy with our dimensions and loose with those, but we don't want to be loose about which axis we're on. So I'm going to click once on this bottom left corner, move my mouse down, and notice that my active line turns green when I'm parallel with the green axis. Once I find that green axis, I'm going to let go of the mouse and type 5 apostrophe enter. Now, as I move across to the right, I want to draw straight across on the red axis, but only as far as the edge of this top square. So we have this thing in SketchUp called the inference engine. So we can create meaningful relationships between points and edges and surfaces by hovering and letting SketchUp know what we're interested in. So if I only want to move as far over as this endpoint, I'm going to hover on it. And as soon as I get that endpoint cue, that means that SketchUp realizes I'm interested in it. So you can see this inference line. It's a dotted green line projecting straight down from that bottom right corner. Now if I let my active line turn red when I'm on that red axis, and where it intersects with my green dotted inference line, I can click there, and now I'm drawing much quicker than if I was trying to type in every single dimension. At this point, we can just move straight up on the green and connect our dots. Now you'll notice that when we connected these dots and filled in that closed loop of coplanar edges, we created this surface. Again, a closed loop of coplanar edges is what we need to have a surface exist. So if we were to use our eraser tool and break a closed loop of coplanar edges, it would also delete our surface. So keep in mind that the hot spot of that eraser tool is on that little square at the tip of the eraser. And we're just going to click on this edge. And when I delete the edge, I delete the surface because we're breaking the closed loop of coplanar edges. But not to worry, we can always reheal that surface at any time. Go back to our line tool and make sure we go from an endpoint, click once to start, to an endpoint, click again to finish, and we can reheal that surface. Now, if we go back to our eraser tool, notice that when you click on a surface, it does nothing. In order to delete a surface, we can right click on it and choose erase. So now we still have a closed loop of coplanar edges, but we don't have a surface in between those. So to reheal a surface, we can simply 
retrace any one of these edges. So if I just retrace this edge here, it fills that surface back in. And keep in mind that no matter how many times I retrace an edge, there's still only one edge existing there. So geometry does not stack in SketchUp. So I'll just reheal that surface. Now let's take a look at what we've created here. And to explore what we've created, let's use our selection tool, which is that little black arrow on your large tool set. And click once on the surface on top, click again on this one. Notice that we have these two separate surfaces. We can weld these surfaces together by deleting the edge that separates them. So if I select that edge and press delete, I can delete that edge and in turn I've joined or welded these surfaces together. All right, so now let's take a look at some of our other drafting tools like the circle tool. Click on the circle tool and again with all of our drafting tools that inference engine is always running in the background. So if I want to start my circle from a meaningful starting point, I can hover on an endpoint and in I can hover on my endpoint and encourage an inference line off of that. So now I'm starting my circle, the center point, in line with the top of that rectangle. So I click once to start, move my cursor away, and I'll just click again to finish. So that's how we can use our inference engine with the circle tool. Uh, and keep in mind that is working with most all of our drafting tools in SketchUp. Next, let's take a look at our polygon tool. The polygon tool is that brown triangle up there on your large tool set. Activate your polygon tool and notice that the number of sides shows up down here in our measurements dialog box. We can always change the number of sides by typing, say, 8, enter, and now we have an octagon. Or we can type 5, enter and change that to a pentagon. So we can always change the number of sides by activating the polygon tool and then typing a number and enter. So I'm going to switch over to six sides, type six, enter. And then we're just going to click once to start, move the cursor away from the starting point and click again to finish. Let's now take a look at our arc tool and the arc tool is up there on the large tool set, it's the half circle. So activate your arc tool and we're just going to draw a simple arc. We've already taken a look at how we can kind of snap to a half circle. This time we're going to give it an exact bulge. So I'll click once on this top left corner to start, click again at the origin or technically the midpoint here, click once there, and then I move my cursor to suggest a direction and I'm going to give this an exact bulge of three feet. So three apostrophe enter. So we can be very exact with any operation in SketchUp. Next let's take a look at our freehand tool. The freehand tool is that little pile of squiggly lines up there on the large tool set. The important thing about the freehand tool is that we start and finish on edge or at least at an endpoint because we want to complete a closed loop of coplanar edges. Also, the freehand tool is a click and drag tool. So I'm going to hover on edge, make sure I get my on edge inference here, and I'll click and drag. So again, this is a click and drag operation, and I can draw a more organic freehand form. And again, I want to finish on edge and release, and now I've created that shape. Now let's go back to our eraser tool and so far we've only deleted one piece at a time so you can click on an edge, click on an edge, but we can also click and drag with the eraser tool. So let's click and drag and then scrub over everything in our model and we can delete a bunch of edges and surfaces with one click and drag. So we'll clean up our screen a bit.